Yo, what's up everyone? This is Dan from Rebellious Noise and go hanging with me tonight. I've got Connor, Scott and Michelle and we are here to talk all about the 2019-20 Champions League group stage draw. And they have all got their pints. I've got my coffee. So that means one thing, that we're ready to start. Okay, let's talk a little Guys, Champions League draw has happened. Um, we're just going to go straight into this with Group A. Far we do, Dan. Your team's not in it this year. My team is you not in it this year. Remember last year what you said to us? Last year, I said to you guys, yeah, my team's the only one in it. Now, but, the only, the only guy here with an actual say... Is Connor. <laughs> Chelsea supporter. <laughs> with the Chelsea hat right next yeah, to him. Yeah, he's a Chelsea supporter. So, so yeah. that's the only this reason we got him on, really. Yeah. Welcome to Thursday Night Football. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's good to have you back. I think the, the last <laughs> time Tickets we, are dirt cheap. To be <laughs> fair, to be fair like, the last time we were in it, we won it. So, yeah. so we when Jose won the plastic treble. <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, good old Jose. But anyway, yeah. So, anyway, so, moving straight on into the groups, we'll start off, as customary, with Group A, which features Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid, Club Bruges and Galatasaray. So all I want to know really is what do you think of the group and who do you think is going to get out of the group? I think this year the groups are a lot easier than they were last year and mm. I think it's a lot easier to pick first and second. But then again, things can throw us. A lot of our, obvious, obviously a lot of our uh, predictions last year didn't exactly work out. But surely PSG and Real Madrid are going through. Zinedine Zidane has never not won the Champions League when he has been in charge yeah, of Real Madrid. that's a bit of a weird stat. Yeah. It's a really yeah, yeah, weird a stat. So, statistically speaking, PSG and Real should I'm, walk I'm it. I'm Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Statman Dan. <laughs> Statman Dan. Um, Galatasaray, though, can be really difficult to go and... It can be really difficult to go and play in Turkey. It's a tough it's crowd. But, I, for me, Paris and Real should go through, I think. Well, yeah, I think you stated last season's competitiveness throughout all of the group stages was harder because of obviously the talent that you had lying between all of the mm. group stages. But obviously at the same time, you see what Ajax did and they kind of came from nowhere yeah. and it really shows you what kind of football is now. It's, it's more of like anyone's game because mm. of the talent that there is on the field. So even people through supporting Club Bruges and Galatasaray would clearly say that they've got a chance as well. Yeah. You know, who knows what could happen, but obviously your favourites are Paris and Real Madrid. Like you said, nobody saw, I think last year we were hopeful and optimistic for Ajax, but no one saw what they were going to do. Oh, there no. could be a player at Galatasaray, because I don't watch the Turkish League, for example, and there could be a player there that's about to become the next big thing that everyone's going to want, and we just don't know, you know, like, so yeah, something like that could happen as well, but surely. I mean, we hope, as English supporters of yeah. the footballing world, that Real Madrid and Paris probably won't go through, but most likely that they will. Yeah. But we yeah. just hope that we can back Club Bruges and Galatasaray yeah, to try man. and grab them top spots for us. Oh, for me. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that, I think that it is um, Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid, but then I think Galatasaray are going to push them close because, I mean, we've seen that Real have not... They've not been, been firing on all cylinders, you know, They've not been they? firing yeah. on all cylinders as of, like last season but you know I think it, it is really like it's hard to look past those two mm. really so I, th I think PSG though I mean they for years now people have been going they've got to do it they've got to do it mm. I think if they don't get to at least a semi this year I think yes. Thomas Tuchel's gone we, uh, same thing we said I last think he's year, gone like, yeah. it's just think, when, when are they going to pull the trigger and actually do it you know, like last year, I was way more optimistic about, it. and we'll get onto who we think our winners will be later. They, I'm sure, but they lost I'm their less opening game in now. Ligue 1. They lost their yeah. opening game at home. You know, it, was it at home? I can't remember, but they but definitely got, lost their got opening. And they're Herrera now as well. So that's oh, oh yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That, that uh, Europa League winner, yeah. <laughs> and the Herrera. So, so I think general consensus then is that we all Surely really think that it's going to be Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid. So now we move on to Group B, which is the first group which features an English team. And I was going to go, way then I realised it, it was is. Tottenham. It's Tottenham Hotspur, <laughs> oh. alongside Bayern Munich, Olympiakos, and I won't try and pronounce the name that they've got there, but it's Red Star Belgrade. Belgrade. For me, uh, I think it's got to be Bayern and Tottenham. 
but then Olympiakos could spring a surprise. Again, it's one of those where it seems a little harder than A, but still quite close of to that of, you know, surely Bayern and Tottenham. But like you say, Olympiakos and Red Star last year, I mean, they beat Liverpool last year, didn't they? So Red Star is a really, really tough place to go and play. There's that really famous footage of the players' tunnel. Yeah. Deli Ali's mm. going to cry if he has to walk out into that. He is, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah. I, I think Bayern and Tottenham, but I also reckon that Red Star could th throw things a bit by getting a sneaky mm. win at home against one of them. Yeah, I, I think the same. I think if anyone's... It's more like Olympiakos or Red Star could damage the other team's chances and somehow maybe Olympiakos can slip through. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Red Star might beat yeah, Tottenham. But do you not feel we're, we're going to be talking about Bayern in the same way as we are about PSG? When are they going to win the Champions League? Mm. When are they going to do it? Yeah. It's got to be their year now. I just don't think they're the same threat they were oh, no, five, no. six years no, ago. No, no, no. No, I, think they're, they're on, I think they're another team that's on like a rebuilding mm. kind of stage, but they're still, I think, that golfing class in German football for them mm. where they're going to be, you know, they're going to be up there. You know, they're not going to really drop out, I don't think. Yeah, it's hard German to remain competitive sort of in thing. Europe when, you're, yeah, when your league's not that competitive compared to others you know yeah. i mean what i mean dortmund obviously are going to give them a challenge every now and then dortmund, but dortmund are really pushing them this year already, but yeah so. i think it's one of those where it's pretty much going to be each year it's going to be dortmund and bayern that are fighting for one and two in germany really mm. um and you know i think likewise in this group it's you know i wouldn't want to pick which order they're going to come in pretty like with group a it's like we predict that Paris and Madrid are going to go oh, through, yeah, but then it's, order, yeah. you know, the order that teams go through, that can also determine the route that they would need yeah. to take to get to the final. Um, but, I mean, if I'm looking at it, it's like I know Tottenham have got big European wins in them. Yeah. We've seen that historically. Yeah, last year. Mm. You know, like last year <laughs> with um, Tottenham and VAR against Man City. Yeah. Um, when they, the rent is thigh. Yeah, yeah. the rent is thigh. Um, but, yeah, I mean... But then you, we've talked about Bayern rebuilding. What about Tottenham? Tottenham have lo lost Llorente. They've signed they're, a couple now, though. You know, mm. they've actually made a couple of signings. Not as many as I think they should. Yeah, because they, they, they were behind the year before that when they signed no one. They've got a lot of players that are on last year of their contract now. You have a Tong and Jure Eriksson, who so may potentially be open to negotiation in January. Yeah, yeah. I just, I feel like I know I said last year that uh, I kind of, kind of. Kind of kept putting Tottenham down a bit, not trying to be the Arsenal fan, but just because I don't think they really have it in them to that pull the trigger. The like to get to the final was an absolute shock, right? And it was jammy, but people moan about that. But ever, it was all within the rules. VRR was true; it was correct. The final, you know, second goal was heartbreaking to Ajax fans and even myself. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was it's it's the rules of football. You play to the end, and VAR. And you know what? Tottenham right are decisions. very good at playing to the end. They are really, really good exactly, at, yeah. at game management, so, particularly in the last ten and minutes. And they do it's something they're they really do strong sneak at. Sneak through a lot. I can't see them get to the final. I mean, I looked silly back on last year when I said, "Yeah, obviously the same fit, sort of thing." I, I don't think, think anyone saw that. Groups, but yeah. did it, did I think they're going to get out of the group. group last year because weren't they? In a, who were they? It was in a group tough with? group. Was it Bayern and Real Madrid? And then every every stage they can't get someone. They have Inter in their group. With, yeah, they did. Yeah. Them quite yeah. Hard. Yeah. yeah, but I think the same this year. I think they'll, I think they'll scrape it through, and then they'll probably beat someone big in the next round. Then we'll all be like, whoa! And then surely the fairy tale will be over, and Potter will be out the door. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like this is Tottenham's chance, really. Like how well they did last year, and the way that they're pushing off the Premier season this this year. Mm. I, I believe that they have a chance they've got a team and they're all young and they're they've hungry for something mm. hungry for a win and they got so close last season if it is if it's not the champions league then it's the premier league and if it's not the premier yeah, league yeah it's not going to be the premier league yeah it's not going to be the premier league well we've yeah. said on a previous episode that we think Tottenham really need to focus on the FA Cup and League Cup like I don't Man's, know like I, think, I think we get surprised again and I think they're going to do quite well but I think I think they, mm, yeah. it could be a surprise but what I think what they should focus on is a domestic cup that, like we've said in previous episodes, catapult, catapults them to something, something bigger. Water, the thing is, I think we were talking about Tottenham being a bit of a surprise and there's going to be a lot of teams in this competition that would have seen that, seen them do that last year and be like, actually, we're ready for them now. Mm. Mm. I think a little bit like Wolves in the Premier League, I think people have figured out what they're about yeah. now. And I think, mm. I think they will get out of the groups, but I think they might find it a bit tougher at the business end of the competition this year. OK, well, I'm, I'm going to say Bayern, then Tottenham second. Like you mentioned, we didn't mention the first one. I'll say Madrid, then Paris. Mm. What about you guys? 
Paris and Madrid for the first one, um, and then I'm going to go for controversial Tottenham to win the group. Bayern second, I'm Bayern second. I think I agree with that. Tottenham, Bayern, and you? I'm going Bayern, then Tottenham, and for group. Is it because of us? Yeah, I'm going to say Tottenham, I'm going to also quite like a bit of Bundesliga. Um, and I think, I think Real are going to top the group in with, group with PSG cool. coming in second. Okay, so now we move on to Group C, which was the one that really annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> it's man What's that, Dan? Because... <laughs> It's another draw where City are yeah, getting a yeah, favourable I mean, draw. You said it a lot on previous episodes, but especially in our, you know, 2018-19 season, season review. But you're so right here, like oh, like it's, this. It's, 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 I was right. I was, I was, so I was right last season as well with like the route that they took to get to like the league. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, when you called it out last time, it's like like it's. I'm not saying there's some dodgy behind it, but like there's some it's dodgy like behind Lona, it. Like, yeah, it is. Well, it's UEFA Guardiola. Oh, because oh, Barcelona go. used and to get favourable ties as well. Yeah, when and Guardiola was right in charge. Bayern, so, so, UEFA Dole, no, so for the um, <laughs> for completeness, the group is actually Manchester City again alongside Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, yeah. but then they're in with Dinamo Zagreb and Atalanta, who I believe are playing Champions League for the first time. Yes, but they good had a them. very good run in the UEFA Cup a few years ago and shocked a few people. Indeed. There you go. So. Serie A Sundays is a big thing in our house, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like the old days for Channel 4 when you... Uh, you Italia. Italia yeah. one, yeah. um, I think City will come top easy. Yeah. I can't call Thanks second God. place if on they this don't, group at all. If they, really don't come, if they don't actually come first and win that group, then to be fair, <laughs> God, just, you like, just, just, just go, yeah. Just leave. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'd usually say Shakhtar, but because you said it's Atalanta's first uh, going with them. Oh, nice. Push, oh. push it, man. Push it. I might be controversial and put Zagreb for second, just to be different. It makes it up. <laughs> Man City are winning that route for sure. <laughs> There's no doubt about yeah. that. To be honest, I think it then really comes down to who out of the other three clubs are really going to put the work in and it's gonna be hungry, trying to grab yeah. that second spot because it's an easy group for them in that yeah, respect. True. Really. True. Yeah, you're right. Because then you haven't really got another big club to face. Mm. It's more about trying to face the smaller clubs and hold off Man City rather than win the mm. game, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Could, could yeah, well come down to goal it? difference as well, to be fair. Yeah. Mm. Like, you know, it might do. Liverpool's group did last year. Like If City gives somebody a hiding and then they might only beat someone, say, 1-2-0, mm. that, could, could, that's that yeah, could affect yeah. the group. But um, I think I'm going to go Shakhtar along with City to go through. Cause that, City top, that, yeah? Yeah, City top, no, Shakhtar second. Because I think the... the <laughs> The Donbass is actually quite a hard place historically for teams to go to. Yeah, um, they don't like going there. It's an intimidating atmosphere as well. And yes, yeah, so to be fair, I think City could actually struggle there as well. What, what is in like? Do you think they might struggle like in the sense that they reckon they're going to absolutely walk over these teams and maybe underestimate them a bit? Possibly. I, I don't mean, know, man, because I feel like they could put out a second. Secondary team and they still do well, especially against teams but like this. But I don't, I don't think they're going to this year though, because I think what this is the one that Guardiola wants to win. It's mm. like he's, he's won everything else. He's like, that's what I want. Well, it's win. the irony, isn't it? Liverpool, and Man City. If you'd have asked any of their fans, happily would have swapped on his last exactly. season. Yeah, yeah. Happily, but they didn't. <laughs> Why did you whisper that? Twenty times. Okay. There we go. <laughs> but not for six years. Exactly. <laughs> Last one, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sitting here bragging about Arsenal, man. I've, I've yeah. accepted our position. <laughs> Battle for six this season. Yeah, uh, shut up, top four. Oh, you, you and Leicester, mate. All right. Leicester Wolves. The supercomputers predicted Arsenal will yeah. come in the top four. Really? Yeah. The supercomputer can be wrong. <laughs> the supercomputer is normally very accurate. Though, did it predict it? Leicester winning the league the other year? No, no one predicted oh, yeah, that. No one did. Yeah. Okay, should you do Group D? Yeah. So, moving on to Group D, Ooh. which features the team that we all picked to actually win it last year, Juventus, okay. along, with, <laughs> along with Atletico Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen and Lokomotiv Moscow. Getting a bit more competitive with this one, mm. but still, surely, Juve and Atletico, and I think in that order. Yeah, it's tough, that one. I think, but I think Leverkusen pick. are the ones that could it cause an upset. obviously creep their way in. And again, I love a team named after a train company with locomotive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, is that is that a fact? You like team named <laughs> locomotive? <laughs> I said it last year as well. I think Leverkusen actually had an amazing season last year. 
last year. They had a good run. It was very season. good. Mm. And I was actually very surprised in the Bundesliga in general. I mm. thought it was very good football and Bayern Munich, they weren't killing it as they yeah, usually yeah. are, if you know what I mean. They so teams like Leverkusen are really bringing through like some good youthful mm. spirit as well. So I don't know. I reckon that, that could be an upset there. And I'm not too sure about Atletico these days. I in disagree. I think Atletico could really go I all the way in this competition. Too kind of boring football. Atletico Madrid. Yeah, are you kidding like, me? They like... are smashing their way I mean, through opponents. I'm, no, I'm saying this I mean, from a Chelsea's uh, point of view. Right, like, okay. I think the la- like last year they didn't really. It's Simi- no, if you think exciting. if you think about what they... I mean, Griezmann's gone. Yeah, and they've got Morata, and for yeah, me, he really can't well, finish they. like. They've no. I think Atletico are definitely going to get out of the groups. I think they get out, but I think they're going to go quite far. Actually, mm. I, I don't know how I far. I don't that. know. But do you go from to top the group? Or yeah, I'm going to be controversial and say. I mean, that Atletico is controversial. To top the group, that is controversial. We are being controversial. Don't Juventus have to drop five of their players because they've got too many people on their team? So mm. surely their whole roster can change as well. And how do they know if they're going to have the chemistry to be able to pull off the Champions League? Possible. Getting too deep now, mate. Especially if they <laughs> players like Dubai and shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Buffon's, yeah. Buffon's gone back as well, so could it mm. be a fairy tale for him? I mean, to end his career. Is it Chesney? Chesney. Yeah, Chesney's still one. number one, though. He is yeah. still number one. With shirt number as well, because yeah. Buffon yeah. refused it. Really? Yeah. So okay. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go. I think with um, Juventus to top it, Atletico to come second in that group. So now we move on to Group E, which is the third group featuring an English team, and it features the holders, Liverpool. And they again get drawn with Napoli, and then they're also facing off this year against Salzburg and Genk. I think it's another two-team group. Really, yeah. Yeah. Two uh, teams. Liverpool top, Napoli second. I mean, Salzburg, I'm sure, again, could probably beat either of those and get have a lucky night, but mm. I don't see it materialising into a second place or even a first yeah. and uh, yeah I think it's worth mentioning that Liverpool are definitely the best team in Europe right now they you are know? I mean up there with Man City obviously but Man City winning the league last year but I can't see past I mean last year we were saying oh Liverpool want the league they don't really want the Champions League and like you said earlier City want it reverse and, and I remember saying in the group stages oh you know they might struggle but I think they'll get through just because they're focusing too much on the Premier League mm. and then when it comes to the business end they might pick up and I feel like I'm just going to copy and paste my comments like because now, that was when I was like well they've got so close I don't think they're going to push that far this year I think it's going to be about the league and now even more so because they want it Surely there's that part of them that thinks I'd like to be the Liverpool of old, the 80s, where you're always winning European Cups. Yeah. Surely. Which I think they could go on and be. But I think because they haven't won a league in so long, surely this year is going to be what they focus on. Um, I think the talent's just so vast now. Mm. Like, it's just so hard to say that one team is going to do it again. Because mm. I think it's it's all about the Them's day the team, and the man. game. you know. Yeah. And I think with Napoli and Liverpool, it's going to be really a shootout because it's just strikers. You know, like You've got yeah. Mane and Salah and Insignia and Mertens, some great players, and I, I don't know. I actually kind of feel like Napoli could take it. Mm. They've been playing very well last season as well, and to be fair, Mertens is probably one of my favourite players ever to watch. He creates some cool. amazing things sometimes, you know. But then the question has to be asked: a little bit like Liverpool, are Napoli going to try and push Juve to the edge and finally win that Serie A title? Mm. Or are they going to throw everything at the league? Mm. How far did Napoli get up at Serie as well? Yeah. Yeah, How far really did Napoli get last year in the Champions League? Dude. I can't remember. Uh, they dropped out the group stage in goal difference and fell into the UEFA Cup because we played them. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. We made them look not very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that in New York. There's yeah. a little bit of me. <laughs> I, I, I would <laughs> really like Napoli to go through because the spin is there. And I like pizza. But there's <laughs> a good reason. So I think that's pretty much <laughs> that we're all saying Liverpool. To top and Napoli. Are you saying second, Napoli yeah? first? I think Napoli could do it, yeah. Oh, Napoli to top Because that's how I felt last year that Liverpool could slip in the group stages. I don't know. But then I, once they get through, push. I always feel like with Liverpool, it's, it can get there and it can happen. Mm. Or it will be a nil nil death tie game, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden one goal will throw it out of balance, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Whereas you see when you see Man City players literally just they, a training yeah. session for them, yeah. you know. And, yeah. 
And it doesn't matter if someone scores, they're just going to score three more goals anyway, you know. 100%, yeah. It's a bit like the old Barcelona, isn't it? You, you score four, we we'll score five. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of which. Speaking of which. Cool, so segues nicely into Group F, which I think we're all pretty much are saying is the group of death, really. Group um, of F, death. Group. The group no. of death, death. group, group F. Of death. F. F. Huh? And this is why you're not the host. It features... <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like puns constantly. Group of d- F. <laughs> so Group F, uh, the Group of Death, uh, features Barcelona, <laughs> Borussia Dortmund, oh, Internazionale, like and oh, Slavia. Going all over the world, there. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Are you a drama teacher? Barca, Dortmund, Inter. Yeah, this is. I think tough, no disrespect to Slavia Prague, but. I think it is definitely out of those Yeah, I mean, that is a hot... Like you were saying earlier, you know, the three teams can kind of fight their way to get that second place. I could toss a coin. Slavia Prague is... Slavia Prague really stood out with Chelsea last year, didn't they, in the UEFA Cup? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's... I'd stand a chance in Grimsy. But that's the thing, because we touched on it last year, obviously, the new way of uh, doing the pots. You end up with... This is why last year's one was so strong. This year hasn't really worked the same way. A few of them, obviously, we're getting to H, that's kind of tough as well. But, like... I think this year though it was what you're saying with the pots yeah. there were three English teams in mm. pot A but mm. that was only because Liverpool and Chelsea won their respective yeah so it kind of trophies. threw it off a bit yeah. yeah so it was essentially like going to the thing of old yeah exactly you know, yeah. You think this it's Liverpool but this one is basically a representation of yeah. the new format Sorry, yeah. it's, it's tell, really like. tough though isn't it because at Barca are, Barca are Barca and they're great but they haven't been themselves no. without Messi they Again, we, we said the same thing last year yeah. and they, they kind of sh- started turning it on because they're Barca and then Liverpool did that wicked free kick uh, sorry corner kick and it just you know yeah. this, they did just mm. feel like capis- Dor- capitulated Dor- on them, Dortmund I'd like to think would get through but again they've started the Bundesliga season really really well are mm. they going to really try and push for that Inter we said it last year I'm going to say it again this year they've got it in them to cause an upset they really do mm. they look really strong this season um, yeah, and as much as I think a few of us on this on this sofa can talk about Alexis Sanchez, it could it could work if, out. If for he, him, yeah, if he so, turns it on like well. he did at Arsenal, yeah. and I think the the right kind of system, and he, I think he's going to try and convince himself. I was under bad management. I was under well, a bad Con- team, and Conte's I was under a bad really part of my life. Manager, isn't he? So, mm. have you seen that he's managed to get Lukaku to shift loads away, and he's absolutely firing on all cylinders at the moment? Yeah, man. Like, Two Man United ex players, like. I don't know. Like after watching their first game, I wasn't too impressed. Like well, they, in, in a, yeah, they yeah. scored three goals and then they managed to equalize and put it all the way back. And mm. it was just like, what's going on? You yeah, know? yeah. And Weak the same, same with Dortmund. As soon as they get any decent kind of talent come through, they just sell them off and mm. they don't really keep the team together. Like we've just taken Pulisic and they've lost yeah. the Young. I mean, they've got Marco Royce, but. You can't got really James, James Sancho. Sancho as well, who, mm. you know. But you're right, there is a bit of a ceiling at Dortmund. I feel like they're just, you know? they give up, you know. Yeah. And if they kept these players on and gave them new contracts, I reckon they could actually mm. get somewhere in these tournaments, you know. But they Especially just. A few years ago, they were really. Which is a shame because they, they are a great they team are, sometimes. Yeah. And just, they've got yeah. Matt Hummels back as well, who um, I really did like as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm going to put it out there. I think it will be Barcelona and Dortmund that go through, but I think it's going to be really, really tight. That it's going to be a tight so it could one. literally come down to a shootout between it, Inter mm. and Dortmund, pretty much. It's going to come down to goal. I feel like, I think. weirdly enough, I feel like if anyone, Barca's the one likely to slip just because of what happened last year. And because of the pressure. Yeah, like, I, I don't want to be being like, oh, Barca ain't getting out of the group because that sounds mad. They're but when, you, when the third them, team are Inter, it's... Well, Barca are actually second favourites to win the whole thing. Really? I can't see that. But they man. are that's pretty just... much year in, year out, yeah, roughly. Think, yeah, in that. it's just yeah but that's because of one man. That's yeah. You know that, right? <laughs> exactly. He can probably and turn he any famous, game He did his famous head, pre-season right? speech, mm. didn't he? I will win the Champions oh, yeah. League for True, you. That's, that's a good got, point, They've got Griezmann as well. The Griezmann, then, yeah. The Griezmann. Yeah. As always, they've got too yeah. many players. That's a good point, to be fair. They've actually up their team as well. They brought in one of the Ajax boys as well. Yeah. yeah, Frankie De Jong. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that you know what? Fair, I think Dortmund are dropping out. I think it's going to be into <laughs> yeah. Barca. Barca yeah, I'm, I'm going to say. Team team this, uh, I think Barca and Dortmund. But I say Barca and 
Inter to shake it up, even though I was going to drop Barca <laughs> over Dortmund just now. But you folded so okay, easily. Yeah, there. but you remind, you know, you remind me of De Jong and and uh, Griezmann. You know, we've got his brother on a yeah. cast here. You know, look at him. I just realised. Are you sponsored by Head and Shoulders? <laughs> <laughs> Not real. <laughs> or any other shampoo. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go <laughs> Barca Inter. L'Oreal, no yeah. choice. Did you, um, did you do yours? What, L'Oreal? No, your, <laughs> your prediction. So, yeah, this is all. Who's going to win? <laughs> yeah. What, in that group? Yeah. Oh, I mm, I reckon it's Barca Inter. Barca and Inter. Yeah, and then mm. Dortmund are going to fall behind. Mm-hmm. Oh. They look like little bumblebees. How could you not want to support them? I love. I, I love want him to do well. Yeah. And I love Marco Royce, and I, I hope that he does something great for his career, like winning mm. Champions League. But it's just the facts: like they can't build a roster, and they can't keep it, and they can't create. That's, that's about a fundamental change that needs to happen at board level at the club, though. It's, it's a little bit like Arsenal like in the sense dumb. that they yeah. like to sell the youth on, don't they? So. Mm. So yeah, moving on now to Group G, we feature Zenit St Petersburg. Benfica, Leon, and RB Leipzig. Ooh. I think Leon are coming out of that group. I think Leon have been really strong in Liga. Uh, uh, in where, sorry? Liga. Liga. Um, <laughs> glad that's continuing this season. <laughs> in Liga. Uh, I, I'd say it looks like Benfica and Leon. Even though Zenit and Petersburg are the top tier and Leipzig are obviously pot four. But I like the way Leipzig play. I hate their branding, but I like the way they play. I'd have to say, I think this is probably one of the most difficult groups out of the world. Because they're all like a middle road team. They're real middle of the road. I don't know. I'd I'd like to say that a lot of French would probably like to say that Lyon are the top that they've got out here. Apart from Paris, of course. But I don't know. The same problem I have with Dortmund that I have with Lyon, you know. They just sell all of their great players and then what they're left with you know mm. like I don't think they've got the striking force that they used to have because you guys stole them you know yeah. <laughs> yes we did <laughs> and I think Benfica are a great team and Leipzig are a great team but it's just really who's going to come out on top maybe it could come down to goal difference as yeah, well yeah it's you hard know? to pick I think this is the hardest group because they're all average teams they're that all have very problems, on a par yeah. and they all play differently as well mm. so it's, it's very much pretty much what's going to happen it's like day. it's like we're looking at a, a group of Wolves, Leicester, you know, all those kind of like Everton, those kind of like six middle of the table, yeah, middle of the table kind of. And Man United, as well. And Man United. Well. <laughs> Look, <laughs> really Looking bracket. logistically at it, Fra- uh, in in France, Lyon have to play teams like Lille and PSG, and not so much Monaco. They were rubbish last right. season. But so you're saying they'll be stretched more? No, no, no. Wait for me. Okay, okay. Leipzig have to play teams like Dortmund and Bayern Munich, mm-hmm. but who does Zenit and Benfica really have to challenge them in their leagues? Sporting. So you think they could be Sporting caught off guard? Them, maybe. So I think perhaps yeah, it yeah. might be Leon and Leipzig Sporting. just because they're used to playing slightly hal- higher calibre teams in their league. So I thought you were going to say the opposite, that they might be more tired because they're trying to battle those harder teams in their league. Possibly. I don't, I don't think that's mm. going to do much in my eyes. Mm. They might nick the odd three points at home with their scary ultras. Hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm inclined to say, actually, I think it might be Leon and Leipzig just because of the quality of what they play in their home leagues a little bit more. Watch how, like, they, when they finish yeah. bottom. You know what I'm going to say? Leon top, Leipzig second. I'm going to go Benfica top, oh. Leon second. Is this because you want to go on holidays to Portugal? No. <laughs> I think that Zenit are definitely going to lose the group. Which is mad being pot A, you know, like pot one or whatever it is. But well, I think it's only because they were Russian champions yeah. and then Benfica being Portuguese champions, I think it's the Russians had like better like coefficient rankings mm. and that's why mm. they went into pot A. Is it anything to do with them hosting the World Cup? But I don't know, I slightly feel like Benfica and Leipzig are going through. I don't rate Leon that much, I'm sorry. Oh, thanks for apologising. <laughs> <laughs> Apology <laughs> accepted. There's a Leon fan in the comments going, yeah. that guy's on, nice. <laughs> on the whole of Leon fans everywhere. Apologies. We <laughs> <laughs> so now we move on to the final group, Group H, yeah, which go, is mate. actually the last group that features an English go. team and <laughs> Connor's team, Chelsea. And Chelsea have been drawn alongside Ajax, Valencia and Lille. This is a tough team. This so, is a tough group, even. And yeah. a tough team. Yeah. And tough teams. Yeah, I was right. I was halfway there. Yeah. I think, as well, this is another one where you could f- flip a coin, really, yeah. for first and second. You know, I think it's not going to be easy for Chelsea, especially 
with Frank Lampard where he's got the young players. Mm. It'll be a good no learning defenders. experience yeah. for them. It's still hard to tell with Chelsea. I know we've got a fan saying this. I don't want to be offensive. But um, to sell Luis, I think, was a mistake because they couldn't replace him. As much as he's got a mistake in him himself, ironically, and we know that we've got that risk ourselves now having him at Arsenal, but he brings you something. And I think that's something... Fantastic hair is what he brings you. Fantastic hair. And that's something could have done (laughs) something for Chelsea. And um, we talked about earlier, um, Pulisic, I think he's a great player. Great. And uh, obviously they managed to draw back some of the people from loan that they, you know to make up for them not being able to sign anyone what the 67 people they had on loan last yeah week. but I think the risk of um, Lampard is it's hard to tell at the moment because it's been a bit of an up and down start yeah. and um, it's hard because it's a hard group I it's mean, a hard group Giroud if this was two or three years ago, does well in European yeah, competitions yeah two or three years ago I'd say Chelsea without a doubt are going through and you know I still think they're going through don't get me wrong but I just think it might be a bit tougher for them this year, especially because of Ajax. I think Ajax, which again, going into this whole pot thing, the fact that they had to play qualifiers is insane. They were seconds <laughs> it's, away from the final. They had to play qualifiers. That was This unreal, still needs a bit more tweaking. It? This is ridiculous. Like They were incredible last year. <laughs> yeah, anyway, ran over. But um, They also won their league, didn't they? Yeah. But then you've got like the Russian champions Who, are in pot A, mm. and they didn't. Then have the to Dutch qualify. champions mm. are in pot B, and personally, at I least think, you've got final to compete against there. Yeah, you know, I like think the Eredivisie PSG is definitely. Eindhoven. Eindhoven, yeah. I think the Dutch league is more competitive than the Russian Excuse league. Me. Yeah, thank you for getting as well the mighty AZ Alkmaar, who we've been drawn with in the Europa League, <laughs> and also VVV. VVV Venlo. Yeah, so I think. My heart is saying Ajax are going to go through. I really want them to do well last year, and they completely, you know, did, you know, went past my expectations. Did that absolutely incredibly. Um, but again, Valencia and Lille are kind of tricky ones. Valencia are tough. And it is Ajax sold some of their key players, and they're still quite young, even though they did incredible being young. Mm. There's still that risk that they can slip. Mm. But my heart wants to say they'll finish second, and I think Chelsea will finish first, even though. You know, like I said, they've got a bit of turmoil and a bit of a transitional period. They are still Chelsea and they can turn it on. And I think Lampard, you know, like the Oli thing last year, at least a few games he can push and go, this is what I did, mm. you know, when Oli, you know, obviously with 99 and Lampard having won, you know, the Champions League himself, I think. All those inexperienced, there's still, uh, still something in them. But I think they've got a bit of experience bag. in that squad, though. You know, Pulisic and Giroud and mm. a couple of others. I really like Pulisic. I think he's a good player. Good player. I'll be honest with you. When they let go of Hazard, I thought, is he going to be up I to the task? As well. but, yeah, Hazard, yeah. But Pulisic is, is doing a good job pulling the strings. Like he's been biting good. his we, tongue. We also got to remember they got <laughs> Kante. And Kante was played out of position a lot last season, really. And actually, I think mm. Lampard's going to start playing him in the right way again. Mm. And Jorginho as well. Jorginho! Jorginho! Oh, Georgie. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's a fight or flight situation for Chelsea at the mm. moment. And no one really knows what's going to happen. And I feel like someone like Frank Lampard, he's getting a lot of criticism actually for what he's taken on. But if you really think about it, he's taken on a job where he can't really do anything with. Mm. And he's got to be able to pull back loans, but he can't buy any players. And he's not sure if he can, maybe in a couple of yeah. years. Like It's a bit of a poison chalice, yeah, the Chelsea so job, isn't it's, it? It's almost like the best time to do it and the worst time because you're almost not expected to do much because of all the limitations. Yeah. But, so it kind of like but is if, easy on the whole club legend thing. Off, but exactly. Then yeah. what would that show for exactly. your character? We're also talking manager, about right? a club, though, that <laughs> Sarri won. The yeah, Europa League yeah. in his first season. Yeah, and, yeah. and the stick he got from the board yeah. of the I fans think surely unreal. Lampard would get a bit longer. Well, you know what? He's been I, given two years, I enjoyed what he did at Derby. Yeah, I same. thought he did a great yeah. job. Yeah. At he was Derby. unlucky to not come Especially up. Especially for the fact Derby. that that was his first managerial kind of position. Yeah, yeah right? definitely. And now that he's actually come back to his club, and uh, maybe we've had a rocky start off into the Premier League, but. Even from the games that we've played, I feel like we've done some incredible you things. You can still right? see stuff in the team, yeah, where it's like, if these things, you know, on the right day, move together in the right way. Well, we just, we could, just yeah. lose the last hurdle in our defence, mm. and there's obviously problems there. But I think if we get it right, and we play like Ajax played last season in the Champions League, where mm. it was just a bunch of young kids playing simple football, one-twos, triangle point. passing, you know, and then they actually managed to do something with their mm. team, you know. If Chelsea can bring their young squads into that kind of competition with that same kind of mindset, like we're looked as as the team that are going to do really bad because we've got no new 
new players. We've mm. got a manager who's only been a manager for two seasons. He doesn't really know what's going on. Chelsea's hands are up in the air asking the rest of the world what's going on. Mm. Like, you know, and I reckon if they pull their head out of their asses, they can fucking do something mm. with it. You know what I mean? And they could actually probably win the group. I mean, we've played Valencia more times than any of these teams on this yeah. board, for sure. And we've definitely got the experience to be able to know what their tactics are and the way of football that they play. Ajax, I different story. They're a new team, and I guess it's really just going to come down to what's going to happen on the day. Yeah. And then Lil, in my eyes, again, I don't, I don't really rate the French league at all. <laughs> I'm mm. sorry. You uh, don't like Ligue 1? I don't think it's a great league. I think it's getting better than it was yeah. five, six years ago. <laughs> but um, I think that it's very yeah. biased, the fact that they get a lot of the... Places. Positions, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. especially like we said with Ajax having to qualify, that's that is a bit because the level of football that you play, you really you've just got Paris, but they've just got the money behind them to yeah. be able to purchase these kind of players into yeah, the yeah. league, you know. But there really is no development within that league, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people say Mbappe needs to leave the league already. Um, I think so. As well. I, don't, I don't see Lille doing anything really much in this. I reckon Chelsea top. I can't call second place. I think Ajax might just do it, but I think Valencia is. They've got the ability to cause mm. the upset. It's a difficult place to go and play away. It's a huge stadium. Mm. It's being pulled down in a year or two, oh, isn't it? Mastaya. The Mastaya, they started building a new one a few years ago. It got half finished because they ran out of money. And the council turned around and said, if you don't finish it in the next however many years, we're just going to demolish it. Wow. So my understanding is there's another attempt on to try mm. and build the new ground and the Mastaya in theory will go soon. I don't know whether that actually happened or not. I've got a friend that lives in Valencia. I'll give him a call and find mm. out what's going on. See if they can be our reporter. The live on the, live <laughs> on the thing. Yeah. So, yeah, Chelsea, Ajax and me. and Chelsea, Ajax. And you? I'm going to go uh, Chelsea, Ajax. But I'm just picked up Valencia. What's going on? I know, I, but I still think Ajax are better. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> At first, I was thinking it possibly could be Ajax, Valencia, but... Wow. I'm gonna go. Hmm? I said wow. Oh, I thought you said why. Um, no, no, no. But <laughs> I'm gonna go. Why? Yeah. Yeah. No, right. <laughs> but no, I think Chelsea will go through. I think Chelsea will go through second. Ooh, so behind Valencia, but it'll be Ooh. close with Chelsea and Ajax. So okay. you think Ajax are the ones slipping? Ajax will slip. Oh. Ooh, okay. And that concludes the draw. Um. So. Now we're just going to get on with who do you think's going to win the whole thing. I mean, I've got some betting odds for you guys right, right here. Let's do the betting odds first. Then. So okay. we've got Gage. <laughs> the favourites to win it are Man City. Wow. At seven to two. They were the favourite last year, though, weren't they? Then second Probably is Barcelona at five to one. Mm. Mm. Then Liverpool at sevens. Real Madrid at nine. Then PSG and Juventus. Oh, Juve's quite far down. I thought they'd be higher. And outsiders at seventy four to one into Milan. No, seventy four. Okay, so I'm gonna say last year I was like, you know, if Juve and PSG don't do it, this is their year. Surely, I'm still sticking with that, but not with PSG, but with Juve because I think they have been building that team. Things can go wrong in, in knockout competitions, and it clearly did for them. They've got the talent. Exactly, and like they last year they signed Ronaldo to win the Champions League. It didn't happen, but I think that fire's still there. He's still an absolutely incredible player at his age. And, you know, a bit of bias being an Arsenal fan, but Aaron Ramsey, I think that's a good signing for them as well. I think the talent they've got, I think it really should see them through. But we could say that about City, we could say that about PSG, Barcelona, a lot of buying. But I'm gonna again say that I think Juventus are winning the Champions League. With a final with maybe Real. Oh, Ooh, controversial. And the final this year is actually at the Ataturk Stadium, Istanbul, where Liverpool won it back in wow. 2005. Love how no one's really big enough Liverpool this season, even though they won it last. Because I think they could become a European powerhouse, but I think that's, they haven't got a right I think, set on I that. think they want the Premier League too badly mm. now. Connor, who do you think? I'm going to say Chelsea, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, not who you want, who you think. <laughs> no, I reckon Chelsea could do it. But I think out of the big teams with the big talent, mm. out of all of them, I'd say Real Madrid are really looking tasty this year. To beat who in the final? Just to win. Who are they going to beat? Who are they going to beat? Wow. 
Genk. Probably Barca. Genk. 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 <laughs> Genk in the Real Barca final. Actually, no. Real Madrid Liverpool rematch Real of Liverpool. last year. Yeah. Be, yeah, that'd be good. Or Man City. I don't know. <laughs> you have to make a choice Just there. There. anyone <laughs> I'm going to take Real Liverpool for you it sounds tasty I think so. Real Madrid Liverpool rematch but I think Real Madrid's team their roster is just so good mm. Eden Hazard mate, Hazard, can just yeah. make that team yeah, so yeah I forgot good. he was there if he turns that on mate yeah they're going to be unreal for me it's it's between those top two in Group D I think it's going to be Juve or I think Atletico Madrid might pull a fast one really I, th- I think I am. I'm inclined to go Juve again this year, mm. but I think if I reckon if Madrid can, if Atletico Madrid can top that group, I think they could go on to win it. That's a really long shot, I know, but mm. I don't know. There's just something about the way Simeone's got that team drilled. Their discipline in finals, their discipline in European knockout football. They know they're unlikely to win La Liga with the way that Barcelona and Real play. But they, even without they might. Griezmann, though. but they've got that other kid, didn't they? Diego Costa. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Um, isn't Joao Felix there? Yeah. Kieran Trippier as well. K yeah. Trips, yeah, he's had K-trips. a good start. He's had a really good start. Um, yeah, Joao Felix, that's his name, isn't he? He's like 18 or something. Yeah, they paid an outrageous amount of money for him. For I'm going to go a little world. bit left field and say, I think Atletico Madrid might do it. They're going to win the whole thing, yeah? Possibly. Who's in the final against them? Uh, Barcelona. So, as much as this pains me, oh. I reckon the final oh. is going to be really? City Liverpool. Really? The final. Again? That'd be incredible. I think City Liverpool to do as that the final. two years in a row, just thinking that would be great. That that'll be a stat. But if they're right? like head to head in the league and the Champions League, imagine that. Man. I honestly, but they're I both think, good enough. I think this year is going to be City's year. I think. I think City wow. have got it. I mean, the only thing is. I was leaning maybe towards Barcelona as well, but I do think Liverpool have got that momentum. I, mm. I think it all depends on the kind of draw that Liverpool get. I think if yeah, in the knockout stages, point. if Liverpool get the second legs at Anfield, mm. then they will go far because nobody yeah. will go. They just about, get the job done there. Yeah, content. and yeah. Mm. Chelsea just. You know, I think. Shot. This year, I think Guardiola has gone out. He's strengthened. He's like, right, I'm winning that Champions League this year. Yeah. And I think it will be City. I'm going to say City will win the Champions League this year. Beating Guardiola Liverpool will the then final. leave. And they'll beat Liverpool in the final. Wow. That's some bold two players, one. right? But I could see it happening. Wow. So, yeah. But you can't see Atletico Madrid happening. Wow, wow. <laughs> thanks for your support. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's really, really left field, but I'm just thinking about the fact that your Juve, your PSG, your Man City's have had the opportunity so many times mm. now and just not done it. Yeah. And Ajax That's what I feel and Tottenham PSG. took a lot of those big teams right to the wire last year. And I think Atletico Madrid have that just that little so, bit more discipline. So I don't know. I think they could do it. <sighs> They'll go out in the group stages now. Yeah. <laughs> So there we have it. We've all made our predictions now and it's not as clear cut as last year. No. Remember last year we all kind of, we all roughly went the same. I so, got it really wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I think... So we've all, like, we've hedged our bets like a little bit. Yeah. Who's out Someone's going to be right, <laughs> Judge, Judging on last year's and looking Shut at this year's, gonna we're going to look at a Slavia Prague locomotive Moscow final. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so In then, Istanbul. That is pretty much it for this episode but we have one more piece of housekeeping that we're going to be doing the guys have got empty pints you still I don't still <laughs> doesn't, but the others do so now we're going to give one of these lovely people the chance to win the bonus pint So we've done the episode, we've done all the housekeeping, so the final thing that we need to do is we are going to give one of these the opportunity to win the bonus drink. And here I have the Ooh. GH Cup. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The golden nectar. I believe I was the last sorry. member of the team to drink from that Michelle cup. Michelle was you the are. last person. Don't worry, we have washed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I so. I rim earlier, don't tell anyone. Guys, fingers <laughs> on buzzers. So to speak, 
This question yeah. is all about <laughs> last year's Champions League. Oh, shit. Hope you were paying attention. Is it A to D? It's A to D. Okay. So, in last season's Champions League, there were a total of 366 goals scored. That was from the group stage. It doesn't okay. include qualifying. Okay. Out of those 366, how many were scored by Englishmen? Oh. <laughs> was, it, <laughs> was it 18, 24, 30, or 36? Englishmen, not English teams. Englishmen, English players, Scott. Okay. 18. Is the correct answer. Yeah! <laughs> I didn't realise we were even doing answers and that's what I was still thinking. There is your pint. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to get the new one. And so, the 18 oh. goals were scored. Five by Harry Kane. I, was, I thought it ain't 18 different people, was it? No. <laughs> five by Harry Kane, five by Raheem Sterling, two for James Milner, two for Marcus Rashford, one for Jadon Sancho, one for Daniel Sturridge, one for Phil Foden, <laughs> and, ob <laughs> and obviously a Phil Jones own goal. Technically, still counts Does as a goal. Oh, ah, okay. Is it the one yeah. where he was gurning and like hitting Probably. the floor? <laughs> it still, it still counted as a goal, so okay. we'll include okay. it. Well, I'm so pleased. So there we go. Right, Scott well, is um, the recipient of the GH Cup. Hooray! There you go, Oh! Hooray! 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 Hold on. Take a little sip. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's this episode all wrapped up. Don't forget, you can subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever social media platform you're on. Type in Red Noise and you'll find us. Thanks for Go Hanging. We'll see you again soon. Hey.